Hi everyone, I'm Chris and welcome back to the lecture on support vector machines of this machine learning course. In this final section, we talk about support vector regression. So far, we considered the support vector machine for classification problems. Besides classification, we can apply a support vector machine also to regression tasks. This is called support vector regression. The idea is that the margin now must cover all data points. So this is in contrast to the classification task where the margin needs to be free of all data points. The boundary geometrically in the middle of the margin is our regression model used to estimate the y values for given x values. So the boundary gives our model function. Similarly to classification, we can use soft margins for regression as well. This means we can allow a few data points to be outside of the margin. Support vector regression and linear regression seem pretty similar. Both have a linear assumption in mind. However, usually support vector regression, at least with hard margins, is pretty sensitive to outliers because the margin includes even the outliers. This is different than linear regression. However, if we take soft margins, the support vector regression becomes more similar to the linear regression. So, in contrast to linear regression, support vector regression takes only the outermost data points into account. However, this does not affect only outliers. For example, consider a group of data within the margin. The support vector regression is less sensitive to this group than linear regression. Linear regression uses a cost function like mean squared error, which takes all data points into account. And a group of data points give much more weight to the cost function, so it attracts the model line. So, in total, linear regression seems a bit more to take all data points into account than support vector regression. However, support vector regression is a very efficient algorithm because it is determined just by the support vectors which cover the margin boundaries. Last but not least, it should be mentioned that the support vector regression has a very efficient option to incorporate nonlinearity. We've derived the dual formulation of the cost function in a previous section. This formulation gives a very efficient way to incorporate variable transformations via the kernel trick. This can be transferred to the support vector regression as well. So with the support vector regression and the kernel trick and the dual formulation, we can tackle also nonlinear data distributions. Section finished and lecture finished. So this lecture was all about the support vector machine. We've seen the idea behind it and the mathematical formulation of the model. The cost function for training of a support vector machine was derived. Further, the dual formulation of this cost function gave an efficient way to handle nonlinear problems. Therefore, we used the so-called kernel trick to incorporate variable transformations. Smaller nonlinearities could be incorporated using the soft margins. And last but not least, we've seen how to tackle regression problems with a support vector regression. In the next lecture, we consider the decision trees. Section finished. Thank you very much for listening. 
If you like this video, please click the like button and consider to subscribe this channel. If you have any questions or comments, please leave a comment down below. So thanks again and see you in the next section.